What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it is Monday. So that usually means we say here we give your we give you guys a recap, position grades, and players of the week for the following Jaguars loss because it's 2020. The Jacksonville Jaguars are not trying to win; they are trying to tank, and they can't even do that right. They got a week one win against the Colts, and the Jets really, to me, look like they might go 0-16. I don't know if you took a peek at the Jets' schedule, but it really, really does not look like the Jets are going to win a football game. Now, today we are not going to be recapping the uh, the Lions game as much. We're going to talk about the Lions game a little bit. We're going to you know sprinkle some of that in here, so it's still going to be titled a Lions recap, but mainly what this is going to be is a deer video. I haven't made a deer video since I believe deer Jalen Ramsey or deer Blake Bortles. I'm surprised I didn't make a deer Yannick and Gogway video, but we haven't made one of these videos in a long time. We haven't made a video where I sat down, talked to a member of the Jaguars, and really, you know, told him, spoke from the heart, and told him how I felt. Usually this is from to a player that I love or a player that I care about, but today, this is going to be directly to Shad Khan, directly to Tony Khan, directly to the Khans, directly to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I guess this is going to be Dear Shad Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is Dear Shad Khan. So just like a lot of you, I'm sure, I had a lot of high hopes and aspirations when Shad Khan first bought the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, he seemed really invested. He seemed like a guy that would really bring a winning culture and really bring something to the table for the Jacksonville Jaguars that we haven't seen before. And, you know, that was kind of a breath of fresh air at the time. This is like, ooh, are the Jaguars finally going to turn the tape, uh, turn the corner? And then, you know, he stuck with Gus Bradley for a really long time, you know, and he hired Dave Codwell. He hired Dave Codwell when he hired Gus Bradley, obviously. And, you know, he has shown that he has incredible, incredible patience, which in this league, excuse me, is not going to get you championships. You know, especially if that patience is not with a guy that is consistently good or a guy that is consistently, at most, mediocre. Jesus Christ. Speaking from the heart, no edits. You know, and that's what he did with Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley was consistently bad, stuck with him. Dave Codwell consistently, consistently misses on his draft picks, keeps him around. And now you got Todd Wash, you got Doug Marone. I get that this season may be a tanking season, but you're not even going to say anything. Like, I mean, there's there's these, like, this talk on Twitter, you know. Tony Khan went on Twitter and apologized to his soccer team, I believe, for losing a game or losing the playoffs or something, something like that. And Jags fans, you know, they, they took offense to that. They're like, you know, the Jags have been losing, you know, since Shad Khan has been an owner. I mean, the 2017 season was that exception. But other than that, this Jaguar team is not, is, hasn't been winning. And that's just been a staple of the Jacksonville Jaguars since it became a franchise. And, you know, you guys are supposed to fix that. You guys are supposed to come in and, you know, sell the hottest ticket in town. You guys are supposed to make the Jacksonville Jaguars a winning football team. You guys are supposed to make this team something that it hasn't seen in a long time. And you guys cling on to this 2017 vision. You guys cling on to the AFC South. You guys cling on to these bad decisions after bad decisions that you guys have constantly made to make this team worse and worse. Signing Blake Bortles, signing Dave Codd, I mean, signing Tom Coughlin, signing Nick Falls. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, if you want to just make a whole video, I'm sure there is one on YouTube of the rise and fall of Saxonville. I mean, there, there's two people currently on this team from that 2017 defense. Like, the Jaguars had the hardest rise and the hardest fall maybe of any NFL team ever. I mean, it was the quickest rise and the quickest fall that I've ever seen. Now, going back to what I said, 
I understand this is a tanking season. I understand that the Jaguars are not going to win a lot of games. Maybe not even win another game for the rest of the season, especially just going off of how hard this schedule is going to be coming up. I mean, you got top-notch AFC teams, top-notch NFC teams that you guys have to play. I mean, you got Green Bay. You got Baltimore. This is a season that, without a doubt, is pretty much a wash for the Jaguars for the rest of the season. But, with that being said, you know, can we not get rid of some of the problem here? Like, can we not get rid of Doug Marone? Can we not get rid of Dave Caldwell? Can we not get rid of Todd Wash? Like, if this is going to be a full rebuild, we can't build with these guys that constantly are the problem. The talent on the field doesn't matter. I mean, in 2018, you look at the talent that was on the field, it's like almost the same people from 2017. And it didn't matter. It's because you had the same guys coaching them. You had the same guy managing the talent. And constantly or constantly fucking up. I understand you probably don't want to go through this whole interim thing. But, especially after what happened to Detroit, man. You gotta start considering, like, now or never. Like, when are you gonna have Doug Marone, Todd Wash, Dave Codwell? When are you gonna have all these guys just hit the road? Like, when is there gonna be a new... revolution in Jacksonville here you know when when are we finally gonna start this rebuild with new faces around this franchise inside the front office because it's getting ridiculous and you know this is a city this is a team hungry for victory but as of right now these fans they're not even angry these fans they're not even upset they're not mad they're not they're not anything like that that's why it's hard. I, I I mean, like, I looked at UCF's YouTube channel. Shouts out to my dog today. And, you know, I looked at, you know, his recap video. I don't know, you know, personally if he's going to upload another one. But, I mean, you look at, like, the thumbnail. It's just him looking upset. It's a seven-minute video. Like, I mean, we as content creators and, you know, people that work in Jaguars media, this is not a fun team to cover. I mean, this isn't even a team that is, like, astronomically bad that, like, we are having fun just poking fun at how bad they are. You know, like, I mean, if you're covering the Jets, for example, I mean, you had, like, yesterday, for example, like, I mean, when they played the Dolphins, they didn't get a third down until the fourth quarter. And, you know, you had Joe Flacco with, like, shit. I mean, you could just, like, you fucking get pissed. Just get irritated. Fucking let all that shit out. With the Jaguars, you guys are so lukewarm, average bad, that it's not even fun. Like, it's not fun at all to watch you. It's not fun at all to cover you. Like, it's hard to get emotionally invested in a team that is not emotionally invested in their fan base. That is how it feels. Like, this is a team right now that is openly not trying to win and is a team that is embarrassed to say it. It's a team that, you know, right now is not admitting to their faults. And right now, you have teams like Atlanta, teams like Houston, you know, got rid of those guys because they know that those guys are the problem. But we're doing the same shit that we've been doing since fucking Shad Khan has been in the building. Or since, you know, Doug Marone took over. You're hanging on to them. If they win, like, two, three games to end the season, they're probably going to be brought back for next season. Like, this is just an endless cycle of the same shit and not wanting to get better. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like being fat. You know, it's like me. You know, it's like you know that you need to hit the gym. You know you need to eat better, but you don't because you don't really want to. So you just sit at home, don't eat. You know, whatever. It's it's just like that. Like, I mean, you know, like, you know, the fans are so still diehard. They're still going to buy tickets. They're still going to watch. So, you know, what's the point of being good? That's like how we're taking it as fans right now. That's how we feel. And it is bullshit that we feel this way. And it's bullshit that you're making us feel this way because we are some of the most diehard fans in the league. I mean, you look at that 2017 playoff run. And we were running our mouths. We were having a good time, a great time. Like this, that was one of the most fun times ever to be a Jags fan. And now we are back to reality, and we're back to where we were. And I just, I want to see this team built, and I want to see how they're going to rebuild it. Because as of right now, man, this is this is a tough team to watch, and it's a tough team to get excited to watch every week. It's a tough team to even show any emotion towards every week. It's a tough team to 
get in front of this camera and, you know, preview and say some optimistic, pessimistic things about because you know you're going to get the same result, same shit, different week every single time. So that's my take on it. That's what I got to say to Shad Khan. Tell me what you would say to Shad Khan if you had the opportunity to in the comment section down below. And that was Dear Shad Khan. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. And nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.